This video is a brief explanation of the process that you go through to calibrate your collector blanks. And so when you're doing qualitative analysis, you've used some sort of a collector card, chrome coat or water sensing paper or some other, some other collecting surface. And that surface will have some color and texture to it. And you need to understand what that is so you can subtract it from the tracer residue when you do the image analysis. And so this pro we'll briefly describe this process so you can go through that and have the confidence that the images that you or the uh, data that you get is actually tracer and uh, and not background contamination. To begin with, we're going to assume that you've already watched the video on uh, the smalldropletsprays.info website on processing your first image. If not, please go, go ahead and watch that. And we're also going to assume that you've downloaded and installed ImageJ. If not, you can find the, uh, again, on this ImageJ software page on smalldropletsprays.info, you can find the links to download that software. Uh, the next step is we also assume that you have gone to the sample data page and either downloaded individual folders or the complete set of our sample data so that you have droplet scans to experiment with. And so if you haven't done that, go ahead and do that. So assuming that you've done all those things, we're going to get started. There you see the image J screen. And so in that folder test scans that uh, you've hopefully downloaded, you'll see a folder called Blank Collector. And in this folder, we've already gone through and we have scanned a Chrome Coat card. Chrome Coat or the new uh, currently available Chroma Lux are very white, very smooth collector papers. Tend to work very, very satisfactorily for this type of qualitative analysis because they make very good high contrasting marks with any sort of a colored tracer. So again we need, but there's always a little bit of color in the background and you need to know what it is so that we can subtract it. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to open this file. So we'll go into image J, we're going to go to open, and I happen to have it open to that folder, and we'll open this, minimize that, and we will Okay, so we've got our blank chrome coat.tiff file open. And we're going to go through and do good diligence here. And we're going to check in our analyze menu that our scale is correct. And it is. Um, we've already gone through in, as in the prior video, and set the scale. So we're going to go ahead and click OK on that. And we're going to check and make sure that our set measurements is correct because we do want to analyze this picture as part of our calibration. So we've got the correct boxes entered. You shouldn't need to check this very often, if, especially if you're not changing these boxes. ImageJ will remember this even when you close it and reopen again. But uh, until you get comfortable with it, it's, it's always good to check. So saves going back and doing it again. All right, so all of our settings are good. So we're going to go into the thresholding procedure. So we go to Image, Adjust, Threshold, and you see the option for Threshold or Color Threshold. They're both the same thing. The links are legacy. Uh, they both used to be a little bit different, but, uh, but now they're both essentially the same routine. We're going to use a Hue Saturation Brightness thresholding process. If you don't see Hue Saturation Brightness, come to Color Space and select HSB. Um, we're using a red thresholding color, which in this case won't mean anything because we won't be able to see any of the pixel uh, stains. They'll be very small. But So where we started here, we've got everything at 0 and 255, uh, the, the widest ranges, uh, except for the brightness. So when we run our brightness to the full scale, of course, we've got a pure thresholded image because it's selected every pixel. And so we know in this case we're going to we need to calibrate against the rhodamine WT dye that we're going to use in these example sprays which is a magenta color if you're using blue dye or black dye or orange dye you'll need to figure out what the what hue range ascribes to your dye and we'll talk about that next in the thresholding video but right now we know 
that rhodamine WT lives in the range of around 198 to about 240, give or take a little bit. All right, so now we've got nothing here. And so usually now it comes to saturation. So we've basically specified that everything that is saturated, or everything that has any color at all in it, is, uh, is within the range. We're going to go ahead and start closing it in on this just a little bit because you can see the histogram here. All of our white pixels pretty much exist at this very end and there's a little bit of variation in that white color but not much. So we start just going we're gonna go we'll do this the long way a little bit here so we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll do one pixel or I'm sorry one degree of saturation that we threshold. And let's go ahead and analyze this. So we'll measure our particles. In this case I'm going to set 0 to infinity. We're going to measure every particle. And because we're going to set our standard a little bit higher. I'm going to set show nothing because I don't really want to see the mask. And really the only thing I care about is the summary. So I'm going to go ahead and take the results tab out of here. Including holes won't really matter. But you could leave the results tab up as well and you'll just get a results table. But all right. So we've gone ahead and oops, where did it go? Where is it? Oh, there it is. Sorry. All right. So here's our results table. And we see we've got about 69 hits totaling about 4000 square microns out of about 40 million. So that's, you know, our percent area is just about one ten thousandth. Um, average size is two pixels, so there's not very much red there. So you could decide to just stay here and say, okay, one, one degree of saturation is a good enough threshold, but let's run, let's run two or three more here, because that, that's 70 hits. And uh, you know, if you're looking at, uh, at small oil sprays or something like that, 70 hits might be relevant. So let's run this again. Analyze particles. OK. And we see now we're down to 24 hits. OK, well, that's, that's getting better. Three. Run it again. Analyze. OK. Now we're down to 19 hits. Uh, we'll run it one more time. Analyze. Okay. And so we kind of get it, we're starting to get a diminishing return here. Run up to five. Analyze. Ten. You can see we go, you know, we get a, a huge reduction in droplets right away. And we'll go to six. So the trade-off here is the higher we go in setting our threshold in, of the pixels that we're not looking at, the, the more faint stains that we won't pick up. So you look here, we're basically past all the white now. If you, you can probably barely see it on the video. There's a black threshold line right here that represents where that saturation boundary is. And so we're pretty much outside of the histogram of all these pixels now. And so the difference between a six and a four is only seven stains with an average size of only a few pixels. And so these are, you know, these are red dust specks within the, uh, you know, probably a errant fiber or something like that. When we go into the thresholding exercise, you'll see there's a big difference between four and six percent or four and six degrees of saturation and so anyway at this point we know that somewhere beyond three we're pretty good and looking at the histogram up here under hue most of our contamination is down in the yellows and greens and so at this point we're pretty well calibrated so the last thing to do in this routine is to go through and write down our numbers and that would be the 198 and 240, 6 and 255, realizing that that 6 could be a 4, but we'll come back to that in the thresholding. And then brightness of 0 and 255. Uh, so those, those basically wind up being your recipe 
for subtracting the background from all of your scans in the future. That concludes this video. Image J is produced and maintained by the U.S. Government National Institutes of Health, and this video was produced by Application Insight, LLC. Thank you.